In this video, we are going to break down the top five astronomical events for 2023. Hey, I'm meteorologist Jonathan Kegis, and we talk and track all things weather and sometimes astronomy. There is a ton happening in the night sky in the year ahead from a possible naked eye comet to a rare solar eclipse. So I wanted to share with you my top five so that you can go ahead and mark your calendar. Stick around to the end of the video because there's something even bigger happening in 2024. I want to show you that as well. Here we go. We're going to start with number five and it's a two for one special. I normally see meteor showers as a cop out because the annual ones happen every year. But the big boys, the Perseids and Geminids, both this year will be unobstructed. The moon is not going to be a factor. So here we go with the Perseids. They are up first in August. The peak nights are going to be August 12th into the morning of the 13th. And what we're going to do with this one is look for the constellation Perseus. Here it is, right low on the horizon. This is about 1 o'clock in the morning local time. Jupiter is also going to be in the night sky. And then again, we are going to be looking towards the northeast. There's the eastern horizon. There is the constellation Perseus. They're called the Perseids because it appears that the meteors originate from right around the constellation Perseus. So that is number one, anyway, of the top five. Number two, the Geminids. These are my personal favorites of the yearly meteor showers we have because it's pieces of an asteroid rather than a comet, so they burn a different color. So really, really cool meteor shower. And again, this year in 2023, unobstructed by the moon. So we're looking for the Gemini constellation, and you see the twins right here in the center part of your screen towards the top anyway. We're looking into the eastern sky. The peak with this one is in December. This is going to be December 12th through the morning of the 13th, a more common constellation you can look for as well. Here we go with Orion. There's the belt. And then just to the left of that, right in the eastern sky, there is is Gemini. And again, the Geminids appear to originate from this part of your night sky. The best time to see both of those meteor showers in any meteor shower is after a local midnight as the radiant constellation gets higher into the sky. Also, you want to make sure you're getting away from the city lights so that you can see some of the fainter meteors as part of those respective shows. On to number four. It's a planetary conjunction between Venus and Jupiter. Now, a conjunction is just when two bodies in space get very, very close together, at least from Earth's point of view. They're still very, very far apart in outer space, of course. But there you go. In the western sky, you're going to notice during the month of February, both of these planets getting closer together. And you see just Venus there on the screen. But when you zoom in, you see them very, very close together. That's how we will see them with the naked eye. And most of these, you'll be able to see these events that I'm showing you, you'll be able to see with the naked eye. But again, early March, that's when these two planets will be at their closest point to each other. This particular night is March 1st, just after sunset. Again, look towards the western sky. If you are enjoying this video, please give it a thumbs up. It really does help me out a lot. All right, there's a catch with number three, but it's so rare and it's so cool that I had to include it in my top five. Basically, we're talking about an asteroid eclipsing one of the brightest stars in our night sky. We're talking Betelgeuse here. That is the shoulder of Orion in the eastern sky in December. Now, this is going to occur on December 12th, just after 8 o'clock in the evening. Basically, if you live in only extreme South Florida or the Keys or want to plan a wintertime vacation, you will be able to see for about 10 seconds Betelgeuse's light go out just like that. As the asteroid moves in front of the star, it'll make it seem like the star is gone for about 10 seconds and then the asteroid will be on its way. Who doesn't love a good comet? We're going to get the shot to see one in the night or morning sky as we get deeper into January and start February. Comet ZTF, named for the Zawicki Transient Facility, is going to be moving through our sky and getting closer and closer to Earth. Now, we will have the opportunity for this to be a naked eye comet, especially the further away from lights you get. It would appear as a green, faint orb. You may know that comets are notoriously difficult to forecast. Don't think this is going to be as bright as Neowise was a couple of years ago. Certainly not going to be in the category as Hale-Bopp was back in the mid to late 90s. Nonetheless, anytime we can see a comet with the naked eye or binoculars or a telescope, they're awesome. So this is the deal. As we look into the morning hours here of early February, and again, it's going to be out in the evening as well, but in late January, you're going to have the moonlight to contend with. So the moon is down here. This is going to be February 2nd. Again, give or take, it's going to be out for several nights just before 5 a.m. 
We're looking for the Big Dipper. That's so you can help define this. There it is right at the top of your screen. And then it kind of points down to where Comet ZTF is going to be. Now, again, there's still some uncertainty. Maybe it will surprise and be brighter than anticipated. But at the very least, as it continues to brighten through January, it looks like we may have a shot for a very faint naked eye comet, especially if you get away from the city lights. Certainly find the binoculars or a small telescope and you will be able to see this much, much better. And my top pick for astronomical events of 2023 isn't happening in the night sky at all. It's happening during the daytime. I'm talking about the Ring of Fire eclipse in a lot of the U.S. and Central America going to get in on all of its glory here. A little different from the total solar eclipse from 2017. So the moon isn't completely covering the sun from Earth's perspective. It's going to leave a little bit of orange right around, and hence why it's called the Ring of Fire Eclipse. It's going to look like there is literally a ring of fire right around that dark disk of the moon. This is happening on October 14th, and we're going to be able to see the complete Ring of Fire it starts off in Oregon, so places like Eugene, we are going to see it in all of its glory. Also towards Elko, Nevada, and into south-central Utah, Canyonlands National Park, Capitol Reef National Park, Bryce Canyon National Park. We will see that complete Ring of Fire eclipse. Getting towards Albuquerque, Santa Fe, San Antonio, we are going to be in the path here for this Ring of Fire eclipse. And then into Central America, down into Belize as well. We're going to see that. That's going to continue further into Nicaragua and parts of Honduras as well. Now, you see a lot of these other little eclipse icons, if you will, across the screen. You're going to be able to see this in a lot of spots across the United States. You're not just going to get that full ring of fire effect. You have to be right in that narrow line that's drawn right across your screen here. But places like Florida, we're probably going to get around 50% of that eclipse so it's going to look like that like the moon is taking a bite out of it like a pac-man if you will further north and east lower opportunity for those eclipses. it's going to look more like this towards new york a little less of an eclipse happening towards the great lakes you see seattle about 70 to 80 percent of the sun is going to be eclipsed by the moon and then further south of that main line here still la not getting that full ring of fire eclipse but it's still going to be pretty cool as the moon moves right in front of the sun. Earlier in the video, I mentioned that I would also look way ahead into 2024 because of something really, really cool is going to happen. Well, here it is. We are fast forwarding to April 8th, 2024. Where we will see a total solar eclipse. That's when the moon completely covers the sun from our perspective. You can see the sun's corona and you get that diamond ring effect. We saw this across part of the country back in 2017. You need the specialized glasses, not only for this one, but also for the Ring of Fire eclipse in October of 2023, the one I just showed you. This is going to get underway in the Pacific Ocean, starting on the west coast of Mexico, then moving through Texas, San Antonio. We get the Ring of Fire eclipse, and we get the total solar eclipse. Dallas, we will be in totality. This is going to move into north central Arkansas, into Missouri, Illinois, Indianapolis. We will see totality where it will go completely dark for a few minutes, and you can remove those glasses just for a few minutes as that's happening. That'll continue into Cleveland, Ohio, Erie, Pennsylvania, Buffalo, New York, moving right into the tip top tier of the United States, and then slicing Maine in half. And again, that is where we will see the skies completely go dark. Now, a lot of the country going to see this in some way, shape, or form. Again, just like the annular eclipse in October of this year, we will see a partial eclipse in Florida, where, again, it looks like Pac-Man, where the moon is taking a bite out of the sun. We saw that again in 2017. That will happen to a lesser degree in the Pacific Northwest around Seattle, just a little bite gone of the sun. And then places like Montreal, we are going to see in totality. But Ottawa, we're going to be close to that, but just outside of that path of totality highlighted in this orange color here, we will see it again as a big chunk taken out of the sun during the afternoon of April 8th, 2024. So I would love to know your thoughts. Did I get this list right? Is there something I left off? Would you change the order? Post that in the comments below. I would love to know what you are interested in seeing in 2023. 
Also, again, talked about two eclipses in this video, two solar eclipses that you would need those specialized glasses for. Might be a good idea to start researching them now because there are a lot of fake ones out there and they did sell out fast back in 2017. So maybe start to put those into your cart, order those now while things are nice and quiet before everything blows up at the end of this year. Again, when the first of two solar eclipses visits the United States starting in October of 2023. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you really enjoyed this content, and if you like talking about astronomy and weather, you've come to the right place, please hit that subscribe button. Would love it if you give this a thumbs up. It really does help us out a lot. And again, just really appreciate you watching this and stopping by. We'll catch you guys next time.